Okay, this lesson from section 4.1 of the text is on extrema. Um, so let's first start by looking at this graph which is on your handout and understanding that extrema uh, really means extreme. And I really like the idea of thinking of a roller coaster. So if I can envision myself, you know, if I'm on the roller coaster right here, it goes down and then it goes back up and down again and there's a big hill and then it goes down again and for, forget a minute that it goes continuously in both directions because obviously roller coasters can't but if I just eliminated the continuous part and think of the down and the up and the down and the up it certainly reminds me of a of a roller coaster alright so let's keep that in mind and realize that we've got uh, two different kinds of extrema we've got local and another word for local is relative. They mean the same thing. And we've got global. And another word for global is absolute. And they mean the same thing. In addition to those two different kinds, we also have maximums and minimums. So we have maximum and minimum locals. And we've got maximum and minimum globals. So how do we figure out what these are? Um, let's go and identify all of these maximum and minimums. And in your reading, you should have found that these things occur at peaks and valleys. And you can think of them as maximum and minimums. And of course, if you visualize the roller coaster, every time it goes, it's going down and then turns to go up, or it's going up and it turns to go down. At all of those points you have extrema. Um, this represents going on in both directions to infinity, up and down. We'll cover that in a second. So notice how I've just shaded in these four points. And you'll notice that two of them, in fact let me do two of them in kind of a different color. We'll do the red ones in um, the minimums and then we'll do the orange ones that are maximum. So let's um, identify the maximums. Let's see, we're doing those in orange. Okay, and so now we have to identify the y-coordinate of these things. So the y-coordinate of that one is 0. The y-coordinate of that one is, oh, that looks like about 3.5, hard to tell from my sketch here. Um, that's negative 4 is the y-coordinate of that one, and that looks like negative 8. Okay, so I've got two minimums here at negative 4 and negative 8. So negative 4, there's a minimum, and negative 8. And I've got two maximums here. One of them is at the y-coordinate 0, and the other one is at the y-coordinate 3.5. And, and remember, I'm concerned about uh, the y coordinate. So again, if you think of the roller coaster, everybody talks about the big first hill. Well, they're concerned with the height of the hill, and so that would be your y coordinate. That's another way that I, I kind of think of that. All right, so let's talk about global a minute. Okay, so global means extreme. Um, notice here, let's go back to local a minute. Notice for local, I had two maximums and two minimums. When we deal with global, we can have at most one, which means you can have one or you can have none, because that would be at most one. And the way you figure out if you have a global is you look to see the extreme of the extreme, so to speak. So if I look at the maximums, I've got a maximum here at uh, zero, and I've got a maximum at three and a half. Um, but then I also see that it goes on forever to infinity. So even though I had a high point at zero and a high point at three and a half, um, it goes on in this direction to positive infinity up in the y direction. So that means that I do not have a maximum global. Let's use that same logic with minimum. So I've got 
a minimum at negative 4, I've got a minimum at negative 8, but it continues to go down in the neg negative direction. Way, way down there is negative infinity, which means it never stops. So I do not have a global minimum. So here's a case of not having any global uh, extrema. All right, so the next example that's on your handout changes this just a little bit. Let me do some erasing here. Um, so I'm going to erase these pieces. And let's erase these pieces. And this piece, I erased more than I wanted to erase, but that's OK. Let's erase this. Um, and OK. So I think I had max written there. OK. So for the next um, example, I'm just going to like hand draw on the sketch a minute. So pretend everything is the same, except this piece continues on in this direction. So pretend like this is not even there. OK, so it's going to start up here, go down to negative 4, up to 0, down to negative 8. And then it just keeps going right there. So that means that I can get rid of this maximum right there. OK. All right, so now let's list some uh, locals. So I have a maximum local. I've only got one there, and it's at 0, right? And then minimums, those didn't change. I still have one at negative 4 and another one at negative 8. So I lost one of my local maxes, but I, I hung on to my other two. Now let's look at global. Oops, there should be a G there for global. So global maximums, well, look here. It keeps going on in that direction and on in that direction up to infinity. So there's no global maximum. The minimum, however, is a different story. Look at this one right here. You can think of that as the very most bottom part of this polynomial. It's at negative 8. The whole polynomial never gets lower in the y direction than negative 8. So I've got a global minimum at negative 8. So there's an example of a polynomial that has one global uh, extrema, and it happens to be a minimum. So that's the end of the lesson on extrema.